persecution, like the Crusades. <laughs> Ready for the next page? Okay, this one says, K, it would have the mysterious number 666, Revelations 13, 18. So this verse says, it is the number of a man, and Revolution, Revelation 15, 2 says, it is the number of his name. What do you think of when you think of the papacy? Naturally, we all think of the Pope. What is his official name? Here is a Catholic quote. The title of the Pope of Rome is Vicarious of Philly Day, English, Vicar of the Son of God. Malachi, Martin, and the Keys of this Blood uses the same title for the Pope on pages 114 and 122. A footnote for Revelation 13, 18 is some do I? Catholic versions of the Bible says, the numeral letters of his name shall make up this number. Notice that the chart at right, which shows what happens when we total up the Roman numeral for our value of the letters for the name. Okay, so here's the chart. So whenever you put V, it equals 5. When you put I, it equals 1. C equals 100 and A equals zero, R is zero, I is one, U is five, and S is zero. So that would be 112. When you type in Philly, it equals zero, I equals one, L equals 50, I equals one, and then another I equals one, so that's 53. And then D, E, I is 500 plus zero plus one, which is 501. So when you add it all up, it equals 666. Mm -hmm. So I b think basically it's saying the Pope is the, might, might be the Antichrist. Not Donald Trump. Well, who knows? Maybe there's more than one. There probably is. <laughs> but, so it says V and U each equal 5 in Roman numerals. And so it says, again, the papacy fits at the identification point. The beast with the mark is the papacy. No other power in history could possibly fit these divine descriptive points. Now that we have positively identified the beast, we can discover her mark or symbol of authority. But first, let's look at God's sign of authority. So Andre Retief says, The Catholic Spirit, trans by Dom Aldham Dean, Volume 88, The 20th Century, Encyclopedia of Catholicism, New York Hawthorne's Book, 1959, page 85. The next one is Adolf Harnack, uh, What is Christianity? Trans by Thomas Bailey Saunders. Then we have Alexander Clarence Flick, The Rise of the Medieval Church. We have Joseph Rickaby, The Modern Prophecy and Lectures on the History of Religion, Catholic Truth Society, New York, Simon and Schuster, and Answers to Readers' Questions. On Sunday Visitor. Okay, so we, this is a question time. It says, what is God's mark or symbol of authority? It's asking you. Seven? 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 seven. seven. Isn't it through three sevens? Yes. Let's see. It says, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them. So I think it's the Sabbaths. Oh. Well, that's on the seventh day. And it says that they might know that I am the Lord to sanctify them. Ezekiel twenty twelve. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Exodus thirty one seventeen. So the answer is God is saying in the text above that He gave us His Sabbath as a glorious sign of His power to create and His power to sanctify which is convert and save us. In the Bible, the words seal, sign, mark, and token are used interchangeably. God's sign, the Sabbath, represents his holy power to rule as creator and savior. Revelation 7, 1-3 says, It will be written upon the foreheads, minds, Hebrews 10, 16, of his people. It will signify that they are owned by him and have his character. Confirms this by saying that, 
when we enter his rest, receive salvation, we should keep his seventh day Sabbath holy as a symbol or mark of salvation. True Sabbath keeping signifies that a person has surrendered his life to Jesus Christ and is willing to follow wherever Jesus leads. So I think it's talking about the seventh day, basically, so the Sabbath day. So it says, since the symbol or mark of God's authority and power is his holy Sabbath day, it seems likely that the symbol or mark of God's challenger, the beast, might also involve a holy day. Let's see if it does. Jason, your question is, what does the prophecy say is her symbol or mark of authority? Uh. <laughs> He's like, what? It means, what do you think the Catholics say is their symbol? Like a day, a number, like anything you want to say. Oh man, hang like, on, sorry, I forgot. They have games tomorrow and the sixth Tuesday. day. Sorry. The sixth day? Mom, yes. do you have any answer? Wait, what was the question? What does the papacy, which is the Pope in I really uh, don't know. Mm -hmm. Catholics say is their symbol or mark of authority? Oh, okay. Isn't it 666? Six, six, six? The answer is notice the following section from a Catholic Catechism. 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 Whatever. But, question, have you have, have you any other way of proving that the church has power to institute festivals of precept? Answer, had she not such power, she would not have done that, in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. So the papacy is here saying that it has changed Sabbath to Sunday and that virtually all churches accepted the new holy day. Thus the papacy claims that Sunday as a holy day is the mark or symbol of her power and authority. So what's it saying basically? That the holy day is the mark or sin. Oh, so it's saying Sunday is the mark of their authority and not the Sabbath. Like it calls it Sunday instead. Okay, I see, I see. But, okay, mom, your question. Did God predict such a change in, ch uh, such a change in scripture? No. Yes. And the answer is yes. Oh. yes. <laughs> Describing the Antichrist in Daniel 7.25, God said it would think to change time and laws. Oh. So, A, how has the prophecy tried to change God's laws, Jason? What? It means how did Catholic people try to change God's laws?